Hello and welcome back. In this video I'd like to discuss the many different customizations within ServiceNow. We'll start with UI policies. UI policies offer form control, such as setting fields as mandatory, read-only, or even hiding fields based on certain conditions. UI policies run on the client side, so the UI policy gets shipped to the client where the UI events are triggered and the policies are executed. UI policies offer a substitute to scripting. Let's take a look at an example. Say we are given requirements to change the incident form so that if a user marks the state as resolved, the incident closed code is then required so the user cannot close the incident until the proper closed code is set. This is a perfect example of when to use UI policies. If we tried to save the incident without providing a closed code, we would see an alert pop-up box such as the one shown below and would not allow us to close the incident. This is an example of setting a field as mandatory based off of certain conditions. We'll now quickly take a look at UI policies within ServiceNow. Alright, so here we are in ServiceNow where we are currently in the open incidents list view. I will click on an incident to go into the record. And let's say for the purposes of this example, when a user selects a category of request, we would like to hide the subcategory field and require the short description field. To create a new UI policy, we'll right click the gray banner, go down to configure, and click on UI policies. This will bring up a list view of all UI policies in the system where the UI policy is related to the incident table or task table. We'll talk more about tables in the next section, but for now just remember that the task table is involved since the incident table extends the task table. We'll click the new button and we'll start by adding a short description to explain what this UI policy is going to do. The table field was automatically populated for us since we had the incident filter applied on the list of UI policies. If this wasn't populated, just select the proper table. We'll leave an order of 100, which is the order in which the UI policy gets executed. The lower the order, the higher the priority. So if we had another UI policy with an order of 50, this would be ran before our UI policy of 100. Let's now go down to the condition builder. We'll select the category field and we'll set the value to request. We'll leave the other variables alone. Right click the banner and click save. This will save the data and redirect us back into the form. Once the record has been created, we'll get a related list at the bottom of this record. This related list shows all UI policy actions that are a part of this UI policy record. A UI policy action is where we'll define the fields we would like to modify based on the conditions field. We'll click New, and we'll first start with a subcategory. So we'll select this in the field name. And now on the right, we'll go to Visible and set this equal to False. We'll leave the others alone and we'll submit this, which will create the UI policy action record. We'll create another action for the short description field. and set mandatory to true and click submit. That completes the logic for our rules. 
Let's test this out now. We'll create a new incident and select requests in the category. We can see the subcategory field disappear and the short description field is now required. We know it's required because of the red star next to the short description label. If we try to save the record without providing a short description, we'll get a pop-up box shown here and the field will flash a few times to bring your attention to that field. We'll select another category and we see in real time that subcategory has reappeared and short description is no longer required. We'll go ahead and put the category back to request, fill in a short description, and save the incident. You can see if we change the category, the subcategory field reappears and short description is no longer required. Now let's go deactivate this UI policy. Another way to get to the UI policy is by typing in UI policies in the application navigator and clicking the UI policies module under the system UI application. This will show all UI policies in the entire instance. We will search for UI policies that are related to the incident table and now we can locate our UI policy. We'll go into this record, uncheck the active box, and click Update. As you can see, the UI policy is inactive and no logic is being performed. This is nice if you want to deactivate a UI policy, but leave it in the system for future use. Now let's take a look at UI actions. UI actions add buttons, links, and context menus to list and form views in ServiceNow. They are ran on the server side, but can optionally run JavaScript on the client side. They leverage JavaScript, so you can do some pretty advanced operations with them, especially since you can be in both the client and server environment. An example is the Resolve Incident button on an open incident. This will automatically set the incident to Resolved, save the record, and redirect to the form view of the incident. Let's take a look at UI actions within ServiceNow. We'll start by going into an incident record. Let's say that we would like to have a save button next to the update button. Let's quickly demonstrate the difference between these actions. If we make a change and click update, the data will be saved. However, we will be redirected to the prior view, which is the list view in this scenario. If we go back into the incident, make another change, and save the form, the data will be saved and we will be redirected to the same view, which is the form view in this scenario. Again, both actions save the data, however, save redirects to the current view and the update action redirects to the view prior to the form view. It turns out that ServiceNow comes with a save button UI action. However, it's deactivated by default. Let's track this down and activate it. We'll click the form context menu icon and navigate to configure, then UI actions. We're taken to a list view of all of the UI actions where the table is either incident or task. We'll scroll to the bottom of the list and click on show globals. This will automatically add 
an OR filter to the condition builder, which adds a table of global. This represents UI actions that are used globally throughout the system. We'll right click on a save cell under the name column and click on show matching to show all save UI actions. As you can see, there are four save UI actions a part of the global incident or task table that are provided out of box. Each save UI action provides the same function, but differs based on the type of UI action, whether it's a form button, context menu, form link, etc., or the condition. For example, users with roles versus users without roles. We need to find the UI action that relates to a form button. By hovering over the fourth save UI action, we can see that the form button checkbox is checked and the condition current dot can write signifies that for any user who has the permissions to write to a record may use this save UI action. You can see there are a number of options on this form. On the left we have the name, table, order, which determines in what order the buttons or links appear show on inserts, show on updates, and a client checkbox. On the right, we have the different types of UI actions. Form or list buttons, form or list context menus, etc. Finally, we have a condition field and a script field. The condition field must evaluate to true in order for the script to get executed. Although we don't go in-depth in scripting or the scripting syntax in this course, we can get a rough idea of what's going on here. We'll go ahead and activate this UI action and go back into an incident. Here we can see there is now a save button in the top right corner. It's important to note that this is a UI action that has the table of global. So if we navigate to a different record saved in a different table, say a problem record, the save button will be there as well. If we only wanted a save button on the incident form, we would specify incident as the table instead of global. Now let's create a very simple UI action, which, when clicked, alerts Hello World to us on the client side. We'll first start by clicking the New button. We'll give the name of Hello and verify this is on the incident table. We'll keep an order of 100 and check the Show Insert show update, and client checkboxes. We'll provide the function to be invoked on click, that is, when the UI action button is clicked. We'll also check the form button checkbox, and then we'll write a function with a simple alert message of hello world in JavaScript. Finally, we'll provide a comment. We'll submit this form and navigate back into an incident. Now we see a button that says hello, which is the name of our UI action. When we click this button, the JavaScript we wrote will get executed on the client side. It's important to note that this is being done on the client side and does not require any requests to the server, so it happens in real time. Now let's deactivate the UI action we just created. 
We'll navigate to UI Actions using a different route this time. Let's type UI Action in the Application Navigator and click UI Actions under System UI. Since the list is sorted by Updated, our newly created UI Action is first on the list. We'll click on it and deselect Active and update the record.